Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my final semester of grad school. How did we get here? Did we expect it to happen? Honestly, I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Uh, honestly, I wasn't sure because I legitimately considered dropping out of grad school last year in 2021. I talked to my family and friends about it. I even talked to my professor about it because I was like, I'm not doing well and I don't think I can finish this. But here we are, final semester and ready to own it, ready to finish it off and just feeling very optimistic. Definitely stressed, definitely stressed, but optimistic and ready to take it on. So this video is going to be me prepping for the beginning of the semester. I am starting tomorrow, right now it's Sunday. And so in this video, I do some school book shopping. I found some books that I was looking for that were really hard to find. At least where I was looking, I couldn't find them. So I'm glad I finally did. And I also do some time blocking where I schedule out the semester and like literally a day-to-day -day basis of what, <laughs> how much time I'm trying to spend reading every day and every week. So it's really like a prep video. It's like kind of a vlog but mainly just me sitting talking about school. So I hope you all like it. In general, I'm feeling optimistic and nervous and stressed and driven. So I'm really excited that this is my last semester and now I'm gonna hand you off to book shopping Noelle for some of the school books I was able to find. And then we'll do the time blocking at the end. So hope you all like this video and love you all and talk to you soon. I am back from Santa Cruz now, and it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day in Santa Cruz, but it was also a beautiful day with friends. Just so fun. We got coffee, we got breakfast, we went book shopping. I bought a new sweater, which I'll show you in just a second, but I did pick up a lot of books for school. So I thought I would do a little book haul for school. And then I also got a cool candle. And again, I got a cool sweater. <laughs> so uh, let's let's share, let's, let's talk about it. So let's start with the sweater since clearly that's what I'm the most excited about. Um, I love the Santa Cruz brand, love it so much. But every time I've owned like a sweater from them, I always buy like the men's versions of the sweaters and those are really like tough to break in. And I love a sweater that already feels broken in. So I picked up this like women's version, which is just like the typical Santa Cruz branding, but it's like already worn in and soft and like just like squishy instead of stiff, you know? So anyway, picked this up. I think it's super cute. You'll probably see it in a lot of future videos. So did that. Then we, from the same like skate shop, I picked up a new tote. Do I need it? No, absolutely not. I literally just carried two totes around today, but have you ever seen me with a tote with a red handle? The answer is no, because I don't have one. So the three of us, three girls bought matching totes and it was just, I don't know, I think it's so cute. Of course, then I also picked up some books, so. Let's talk about them. The first one I picked up and the only novel I was able to find was White Noise. I am very excited about this one, but I was bummed that I didn't find any other novels that I need. There's probably like eight on the list that I'm missing. And so I was really excited about like some used copies or just like a bunch of school books so I could just start knocking them out really fast. Um, and I just, this is the only one I could find. In any case, I found one, which is a win. And then I found a bunch of poetry that 
I've talked about this. I'm not really a poetry reader and it's mainly just because I feel like I'm not smart enough for it. And I know that it's just something that you kind of like got to get into and you've got to practice, but like, I just feel like I'm really attached to prose. So, and it's like what I enjoy reading. So I know I have to read a bunch of poetry, but it was the thing that I was the least excited about. But after buying these, I'm like, okay, look, you've got these cool copies. Like, I don't know, I'm feeling more optimistic after finding some cool editions. So we have T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. I was afraid that this was gonna be a poem that was inside of a big poetry collection, even though I only need to read The Wasteland. So I was really glad that I was able to just find this. All right, next I picked up Selected Poems by Gwendolyn Brooks. This was the same thing with T.S. Eliot where like you just needed to get one of the longer poems. And so um, the poem that I need to read out of this is A Street in Bronzeville, which is the first one. So found it, was so excited. I couldn't find the poetry section for a while. <laughs> and then once I did, I felt like I couldn't find anything. And then all of a sudden I started finding a bunch of them. So very happy I was able to find this. All right, next up I have Death of a Salesman with a really cool cover. Excited for this one. I'm especially excited because of how short it is. <laughs> Holy shit. After reading Grapes of Wrath, I was like, I'm gonna need a pause, right? This is a lot. And then the last one I picked up is Sylvia Plath's Ariel, which is a poetry collection. Felt really good about finding another collection. So those are all the books that I picked up. I have a couple more things to share. The first one is an author scented candle. Not literally this author, because I'm sure it would smell like blood, sweat, and tears if this was the author scent, but it is the Patty Wax Library, like gold candle thing line that they have right now. They have a couple of lines and this one looks like a box. This one smells like Shakespeare. And I was about to hold it up to you for you to smell, but <laughs> that would not work. So anyway, I'll show you the front of it. Super cute, just looks, I don't know, like a little library, cute gold box moment. I can keep this for like my bobby pins or something when it's done. Um, I wish it was big enough for post-it tabs cause that would be really cute. And then the last thing I picked up has nothing to do with books or anything, but I picked up a new notepad for our fridge cause we write our list the old fashioned way. <laughs> All right, well that was the little Santa Cruz haul. Again, it was an amazing day, just a beautiful day. But it is like 6 p.m. So I'm not gonna do anything school related for the rest of the night. Instead, tomorrow, I'm really gonna focus on my schedule. Um, part of what's hard for me right now with the school rating is that I love being a student and yet I have no formal classes with this reading schedule, right? Like. I'm not taking any classes. I don't, I'm don't. i not accountable to be anywhere every week. It's just me with a bunch of books. And so I was actually talking to my therapist about this, about like how it's really hard for me to like stay focused, stay motivated, stay on task with like everything in my life, but especially school right now. And she was like, it sounds like you love being a student. Why don't you set up your own class time? Even if it's just you, like if you start every week figuring out like, this is my school time, this is my work time, and this is my like fun time, then you'll feel like, okay, I'm keeping myself responsible for a schedule. And you'll just feel like a student again, because right now you feel more just like a reader. Um, and so anyway, that's what I'm gonna try to do. And I'll do that tomorrow with all of you as I kind of like time block. So anyway, I'll check in with you all tomorrow for more school stuff and school supplies and school schedule stuff, so. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, I am back and it's the next day and I have finished time blocking out my week for the semester, so every week of the semester, unless I already have something planned or unless I'm out of town, this is what a typical week will look like for me for the 
next three-ish, four months. So let's jump into it. Uh, we're gonna start with the weekdays. So every single weekday, I get up at 5 a.m. This is something I already do, so this is not going to be an adjustment. And usually I'm at the gym from 5.30 to 7.30. And a half an hour of that workout, I am always doing cardio. And when I'm doing cardio, I often read. So that's where the first reading block comes from. I'm going to dedicate at least a half an hour at the gym when I'm already reading <laughs> to reading for school. So that's the first block. I've actually put the blocks in for 45 minutes because I often do like 30 minutes on the stairs and then 15 minutes on the treadmill. But just to be safe, it's really, I, I know that I'll get 30 minutes done 45 minutes will be a bonus. So from like 6.45ish to 7.30 is when I'm doing the cardio. So that is my gym reading time. Then from there, I get home around 7.45 and then I take 15 minutes to like shower, get ready, get dressed. And then I always have an hour between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. to do whatever I wanna do because I don't log into work until nine. So every single day I have this random hour that I don't have, like I don't use productively. I usually am just like on my phone or like walking around, like not doing anything, kind of cleaning. Not that those things aren't productive, but it's, it happens every single morning. And I think that I can use that more productively to get a good chunk of reading in. So I've now blocked it out where eight to nine, I am reading reading for school, and then from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I'm going to be at work. This is already kind of what a typical day looks like for me, except that eight to nine block. So that's really the only thing that's changing about my mornings and like first part of the day. So from nine to five, I'm working. Um, I do have a lunch break in there, but I'm, I'm not gonna make myself read during that time because it'll just feel like way, way, way too much. So from five to nine, working, meetings, lunch, doing my own thing. And then from five to 5.30 is just my hangout, feed the dogs, maybe call someone for a half an hour, just I have that little bit of time. And then this is when the weeknights start to look different. So the tentative plan that I have right now is on Mondays and Wednesdays, I am going to have a night class for myself. So when I actually have classes, I typically take two night classes a semester. That's what works with my schedule and that's what I usually do and what I prefer to do. So from 5.30 to 8.30 on Mondays and Wednesdays will be class. Again, this is gonna help my brain feel like I'm actually in school and not just like an independent student, you know? So Mondays and Wednesdays, dedicated three hours each night. Then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have tentative holds on meetings in the evenings with my professors. I'm gonna email them tomorrow, Monday morning, to see if they actually are available either of those nights. But if they're not, I'll move things around to make sure that I can meet with my professors. So that's what a typical week is looking like for me. Now let's talk about the weekends. Weekends are trickier because they change week to week for me. No two weekends look alike. Some weekends, I feel like I can't even catch my breath. There's too much going on. Other weekends, I have nothing going on. <laughs> so I am going to just schedule things in the mornings of my weekends. So since I already get up at five for the gym during the week, I'm just gonna stick to that and get up at five on Saturday and Sunday. And I'm going to block out five to 9 a.m. as dedicated reading time. So at least every weekend, I will be reading eight hours at the very least. I'm not gonna schedule anything past that because I think it's going to be impossible and I'm going to get discouraged because again, weekends change. But my hope is that I can at least find another hour each Saturday and each Sunday to read. Whether that's half an hour while I'm driving somewhere or half an hour while I'm laying in bed or half an hour while I am waiting for dinner to be delivered or whatever it is, whatever that is, I'm gonna try to find another hour on Saturday and another hour on Sunday, even if I have to like kind of chunk it out. So those are kind of for the heavy weekends. 
for the lighter weekends where I don't have anything planned. My hope would be to find at least two more hours a weekend day to dedicate towards reading, if not more. There are plenty of weekends where I've spent like 20 hours that weekend reading. Um, and especially if I'm doing the four hours in the morning, I think it'll be totally easy for me to find another three hours if I have nothing else going on or another five hours if I have nothing else going on. Um, because oftentimes, like if I don't have anything scheduled, then I'm reading anyway. So why not dedicate some of that to school? So at least for now, I am pledging eight hours of school reading a weekend, if not more. I would like to at least do bare minimum 10 hours a weekend, but on the lighter weekends when I have nothing planned, I'd like to get closer to 15, 20 hours. Um, and again, this might sound intense, but it has to be intense. Like it just has to be. I have to graduate. My exam is this semester. It is going to happen. So I have to stick to this. Anyway, that is the time blocking that I have. My other idea was to like schedule in when I was going to read which books. Does that make sense? So I was gonna like say, okay, uh, by August 31st, you have to read all of Middle March. And then by September 2nd, you have to read all of Death of a Salesman. Like I was gonna try to go and like dedicate certain, like certain days to certain books, but that's a little intense for me. And number two, this is already school reading. If I have to like assign it to myself, I think I'm going to get very overwhelmed and not wanna read it all. So at least for now, I'll show you a few of the books I'd like to read in September, but I'm not going to pick a day when I have to read them. <laughs> so the first one is White Noise. I picked this up yesterday. Uh, it's one of the shorter books out of this stack. So I think it's gonna break up the reading really well. Then we have Middle March. I know I said I was gonna read this in July or August. Ultimately things got busy. I'm reading it in September instead. I will do a reading vlog around this because I promised I would do that. It is going to be a reread. So I think it's gonna be a fun reading vlog, um, but I will be reading this in September. I'd like to read Sister Carrie because this is one of the books that I'm the least excited about just because it's one of the oldest ones on my list, but, and I don't know anything about it. Like I haven't really heard anyone talk about it. So I am least excited and I think it'll kind of break up the reading since one of these is a reread, one of these I'm excited for. This one's really old and I think it'll It'll just mix up the reading well. Then for another kind of like genre switch up, I'm going to read The Left Hand of Darkness. This is for school. A lot of you are really excited for me to read this because a lot of you really love it. I'm really excited to read it. And I think again, it'll just kind of mix up the genres. And then lastly, I will read more than this this month, but the last one that I kind of have like bookmarked for the month is Death of a Salesman. It's short, it's a play. It'll be kind of a form switch up. So we've got like lengths, We've got timing, we've got genre, and then we've got form because this is a play and the rest are all novels. That is kind of the stack of reading I'd like to do in September. There will be more of these, but this is kind of what I initially picked up off my shelves. I was gonna go school supply shopping, but then I looked at all my supplies that I already have and I have so many post-it tabs, so many highlighters, so many pens. I already have a planner, so if I do school supply shopping, I'll just put it in a different reading blog or something. That's the end of this video, my friends. I hope it was informative. I hope it was fun. Please let me know what you'd like to see in a future reading vlog, especially around my school reading, because I would like to vlog some of this, but because it's for school, I don't know how to structure that. <laughs> so let me know what you'd like to see. I hope you like this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.